And how long is this score? About that long. And you recall that that's something that was done during one of these episodes? Yes. Was there something, Mr. Menendez, that you called the mirror? Yes. And what was the mirror? The mirror um, would happen a lot after sex. Um, sometimes it would just happen after I played tennis or just when he got home and wanted to know how I practiced. It so was it was a it was a circular mirror with it was like a sailing mirror. It, it had it looked like a, a sailor's port and it had sticks coming out the side of it, like twelve sticks around the mirror. And it, it, it looked like a um the it had wheel runs. of a ship? I, yes, that's exactly what it looked like. <laughs> okay. It was a round mirror? Yes. That looked like a ship's wheel? Yes. Okay. And where was it? What room was it in? It was in my room on my, um, not my nightstand, the, the dresser, um, right across from my bed. That's what it's called. It was in your bedroom. Was it mounted on the wall or was it sitting on the dresser? It was just sitting on the dresser, leaning up against the wall. And. What did the mirror have to do with your father? Well, strike this. He would be drilling you, asking you questions? Yes. What did the mirror have to do with his asking you questions? Well, he would take my chair. I had a wooden chair. And um, uh, he would take it and he would put it in front of the mirror or he would have me stand up in the mirror. If it was after sex, I'd be doing it naked. If it was after tennis, I'd have my tennis clothes on. And he'd walk around behind me and ask me questions. What kinds of questions? He would say, how did you feel today when you were on the tennis court? Did you feel you did well? And what would you say? I would give my answer. Well, hypothetically, give an answer so we can hear how this would go. I would say, yeah, I, I think I played well. And he would say, wrong. And now what was supposed to happen, if uh, anything, when, you, when he said, wrong? I'd have to hit myself in the head. You'd have to hit yourself? Yes. Without hitting yourself, would you just show us what you were supposed to do? But don't hit yourself. I'd have to go like this. Okay. And what would happen if you didn't go like this? Well, it wasn't like this. I'd have to hit myself. I understand that. You'd have to hit yourself. And what if you didn't hit yourself hard enough, or if you didn't do it, or if you missed? What would happen? He'd hit me. And where would he hit you? In the back of the head. And. How long would these question sessions in front of the mirror go on? Half hour. And how many wrongs sure. typically would you hear? I would hear, it depended on how stubborn. It, there were times when I just couldn't take it anymore. It would just well up inside of me and I just, I couldn't stand it. And I knew the answer he would want after a while. I, I knew that if I was on the tennis court, he'd say, how, how did you play in tennis today? And I'd say, badly. And he'd say, right. And he'd say, how did you hit your forehand? I'd say, terribly. And he'd say, right. And he'd, and, I, and, and he'd say, did you hit it down the line like I told you to? No. And he'd say, right. But uh, sometimes he'd trick me once he knew that I was catching on to him. And sometimes I would just give the, the, the wrong answer on purpose. Would you give a truthful answer? In other words, if you thought you played well, would you sometimes say, I played well? Sometimes I would say I played well, but I knew I'd get punished for that. You knew he'd say wrong? Yes. But you did it anyway? Yes. Because you had played well. I had played well, and that wasn't really the reason. I just needed to defy him in any way I could. Okay. And what would be the result of that kind of defiance? I'd hit myself. And how often would the mirror occur? At least every week. Sometimes more. It really depended. It would usually happen on a Saturday and Sunday after I played tennis or one time during the week after a, 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 any sort of a sex massage. It depended. Mr. Menendez, could you please sit back for a second? Take a breath and see if you can stay back there. Okay? Yes. Now, you heard your brother Lyle testify that there were many, many occasions in his life when your father would take him to some part of the house and they would sit down for hours at a time and your father would lecture or drill your brother. You heard that testimony? Yes. 
Did your father ever take you to some part of the house other than your bedroom and give you similar lectures and drills to what he did to Lyle? No, it would only be the mirror. It would only be? It would only be the mirror. So the mirror was what he did to talk to you? Yes. And what about the dinner table? You heard your brother describe what he was put through at the dinner table. Do you recall that? Yes. And did that sound right to you? Is that what you recall happening at the dinner table to your brother? Yeah, it, it was much worse than he described, but it was, it was bad. Much worse for him? Yes. And was it ever that bad for you at the dinner table as it was for him? No. Did your father do the same kind of questioning of you in front of the mirror that he did of your brother at dinner? Yes. Do, do you remember your father ever making Lyle smack himself uh, for giving wrong answers at dinner? No. Your Honor, could we have a break at this point? All right, we'll take a recess. We'll resume at 20 minutes to the hour. Don't discuss with the direct examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Menendez, can you look to your right to the pictures of yourself that are on that board? Uh-huh. Can you see them? Yes. How old were you in those pictures? I think I was 10 or 11. Do you no, wait, appear that's Hershey. You appear to be playing tennis in the one on the bottom. Yeah, that's you know? Hershey. It's got to be 12 or, uh, it's got to be 11 or 12 because Hershey didn't start till I was 11. I think that was the first time I ever played in Hershey. So at the time those photographs of you were taken, you had already been raped by your father, had you not? Yes. And following that, did you make an effort to run away? Yes. And did that occur uh, what time of year? In the summer. And was this a time when someone <coughs> was visiting with your family for the summer? A relative? Well, she was visiting more than just for the summer. Okay. Who was visiting? Diane. And how did you try to run away? I just went across the lake uh, in a canoe and uh, decided to, to leave. Did you pack up some things? I had a lunchbox and I had a little um, uh, school book sack that I put some clothes in and I filled the lunchbox with food. And, and did, uh, uh, did you get away? I got away uh, uh, for the all afternoon uh, until nighttime when it started to get real dark and there was a, was a forest across the, uh, not across the street, across the lake. <laughs> And uh, it was a real heavy, dense forest, and you could get lost, and I did. And uh, did somebody find you in the forest? Yes, I heard my father calling after me. And did he find you? Yeah, I called after him. Why'd you do that if you were trying to run away? At that point, I was much more scared of being in the forest at night than running away. And what happened? Um, did your father eventually come upon you? Yes. And uh, what was his reaction? He was furious. And uh, did he do anything to you? Yes, he picked me up. I was sitting on the back of a tree. Well, my back was to the tree, and I was sitting on the ground of it. And he picked me up and threw me against the tree and said, if you ever run away, I'll kill you. Do you understand me? You'll never get away. And he just went on and on and on about how this was stupid and how this was ridiculous and how I was embarrassing him. And, and Embarrassing him to whom? Diane Vanderwallen was in the house at the time, and he was, he was more embarrassed that I had done this and Diane would now realize that I tried to get away from the house than anything else. Um, I'd like to um, go back for a moment to um, the sexual activity between yourself and your father for a few points, all right? Um, when you were about 13, was there an episode of uh, what you call the mirror that had to do with the sexual activity between yourself and your father? 
Well, it would happen a lot of times right after sex. So what do you mean? What I mean is, did he do a drill in front of the mirror that had specifically to do with the secrecy? Sure, yes. Okay. And was I right? Was that when you were 13? Yes. Okay. Would you tell us about that particular drill? I was sitting in front of the um, mirror. He used to do this every once in a while, I'd say, at least once or twice. It happened more than just when I was 13. Um, and, uh, and I would... I would sit in the uh, in the chair in front of the mirror, and he would ask me if I've told anyone, and I said no. And he would say, "What's going to happen to you if you tell anyone?" And I remember the first time I said that you will hurt me, and uh, he said wrong, and so I hit myself. And he said, "What's going to happen if you tell someone?" And uh, I didn't answer. And he said again, he said, "What is going to happen if you tell someone?" And I said, "You'll kill me." And he said, "Right." And that happened more than once. Yes. I got it right the second time, though. Excuse me? I would learn how to get it right, the answers. So the second time, what was your answer? Just that he'll kill me. And then he said, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, also, when you were about 13, Was there a nickname that you gave yourself that was related to what you've described here as rough sex? Yes. What was that nickname? Um, the Hurt Man. <laughs>